Good evening. I've, I've cried my way and smiled my way through the evening. Uh, you guys have been amazing this evening. I've really enjoyed uh, the performances. Um, yeah, I've, I've been travelling. On My latest film has been about human-elephant conflict resolution in the Okavanga Delta in Botswana. I came back um, about four days ago, and it takes about three days. So we get three aeroplanes, a helicopter, a 4 by 4 and a canoe, and I end up at Heathrow Airport. I'm very tired, and then I came here. So it's really nice to, to be with you today. Um, the, the films are a really a special film for me. It, I made, it's a solo film, and I made it with three researchers in Botswana. And um, so it, it's hugely challenging. We're, we're working um, in a high-risk malaria zone. Um, one in five people have HIV. We're sleeping next to hippos, and we're running off solar power. So you start to realise, you know, you, you take your equipment, and now you've got to get there, then you've got to make a film. Um, and that becomes extremely challenging. The thing I, the film that we've just made um, was launched to the Botswana government two weeks ago and the idea of the film is to show the issues that the farmers have in the, the Okavanga panhandle which is the eastern panhandle of Botswana. There are a number of issues where farmers have fields and elephants come through those fields, eat the crops um, and on their way through to a water source. So there's a huge conflict between the elephants in the area and there's roughly 15,000 to 15,000 people. There are three kinds of elephants. There are zoo elephants, there are safari elephants that you see in a national park, and there are truly wild elephants. Um, and we're working here with very skittish, very scared, very frightened wild elephants. And the children cross the road across the footpaths where the elephants travel, people walk the route and, and actually die regularly. Um, the elephants come through there and they charge the people and they come through uh, roughly 150 to 200 elephants in one go, uh, the biggest herds left anywhere in the world. So it's quite an amazing thing to experience. You know, it's a very difficult place to live and survive. When we were there, one of the farmers died um, last Friday. Um, so it's a very difficult situation. I'm going to show you an extract of the film. It's 20 minutes long. I'm going to show you the first six minutes. The film is now online. So if you're interested, come and see me, and I can uh, show you where the, the film is, the rest of the film. I'm also, just for a bit of, a bit of fun today, in, I'm going to show you some behind the scenes because everybody looks at the pretty pictures and they go, wow, that's amazing. And you're standing in a swamp. Um, so I'm going to show you and talk you through some of the behind the scenes for a bit of fun and finish off with some stills photography because um, I combine my filming with stills work as well. And I couldn't bring the prints along, so I've brought some, some images for you to see. All right, let's have a go. So that's the introduction to the film. Um, I hope you kind of found the first bit quite interesting. And um, yeah, it's, it's a very dangerous place to be. I'm going to show you some behind the scenes. And um, yeah, some of you will go, that's, that's disgusting. But hey, I want to make you uh, hopefully be entertained. So uh, this is, um, we're just getting ready at the pathway. So I, we're looking for the elephants and they can smell you from about a couple of miles away and they will go a long way away. So we have to make sure the wind is blowing in the right direction. And when we know where they're coming through, so we're next to a pathway here, we'll set up a camera trap. So the, the, when you see the elephants very close, well, I'm not very close. <laughs> I've put a camera and we've moved down, uh, down the road. And I'm with two researchers um, from Oxford University who are doing a project out here with the elephants. Um, these are some of the elephants crossing. I have a size 12 foot, and this is a small elephant print here. So um, this is the, the uh, helicopter footage that you were seeing. I get the opportunity, it's quite nice to hang out of a helicopter. It's a normal seatbelt, and, and the helicopter pilot takes the doors off. You just to make sure nobody, you like the person next to you, because if they press the button, you're out. So, <laughs> so it's always a good thing. Uh, and these are the views. What's interesting is it, it rains in northern Africa and it takes three months for the water to travel south 
and fill up these, these lagoons. And when they're full up, some of the animals are stuck on different areas of, of the island. So this is what you can see. And some of the areas, I don't know if you see my mouse, the brown areas here are hippo pathways. So when you see these, these are hippos, and this is the routes that they take through the Yokovanga. So you really do not want to be um, messing around with those guys. These are the elephants. We were doing some collaring of the elephants and tracking the elephant. So this is uh, Anna just putting uh, a collar, elephant collar on. Um, it's a five-year project to try and protect the elephants from being shot. So it's a really valid uh, project. And the elephants move over a huge area. So it's really quite interesting. You can hear them snoring. It's worse than sleeping next to Paul Field. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, this is uh, one of the routes. Uh, this is the this is the last part of my route. After three days, we go across in a canoe, um, and these are this is Pee Pee in the back here. He's really experienced, and we have to make sure that the hippos, because the hippo crossing is here. So I have all my my like fifty thousand pounds worth of equipment on the back of the Makoro, and we just hope we don't go in. Um, and yeah, so I'm just we're just checking the route as we go through here and. Uh, He's standing in the back, so that's kind of fun. The, yeah, the, this kind of bushland is one of the helicopter, the, the airplanes that we take. Um, this is some of the stuff it, later in the film with a farmer. I, I use a cloth to keep the, the uh, flies out of my ears. Actually, it seems to be really quite effective. Um, they seem to like me. Um, this is one of the. This is the director checking out, making sure he looks all right. So this is one of the kids. And the, the part of the joy of the project is training some of the people. So. Some of the field officers, the local people, I got them to do some of the camera work, you know, and the children don't get the chance to see themselves ever. So this was a great fun time. And that's, that's the thing I enjoyed the most. And I've been over three or four times and I've seen the child. He had, the first time we were there, he had a father. The second time, unfortunately, his father had died. And, uh, but that's, that's the harsh life that a lot of them are leading. Here's, my, here's the tent that I've just left. And um, this is apparent, this is quite an interesting in piece of information. Take some old socks, put them in the gap, stops the snakes getting in. Uh, and, I, and I do kid you not, um, here is uh, one of the snakes. This is a bush snake, and they, they live in the trees above your head, and, and when they sit, find a mouse, they drop out of the tree and then um, catch mice. So they're not actually uh, venom, too venomous, these ones, so that's good. And, uh, but they're beautiful snakes to watch. We have also have uh, black mambas in camp, and if you, if you get bitten, you don't survive, unfortunately. So you, we're nine hours from hospital, and you, if you're lucky, you have 45 minutes. This was in my tent. I just had to get him out. This is a, a wandering spider, and again, you wouldn't survive if he bit you. So I was just moving him out of the way of my tent. They're very fast, and he went up the tree along a guide rope and back onto the top of my tent again. Uh, which is nice. Oh, this is a, a mouse in the tent. I think that's what the spider was interested in. Uh, we just tried to get him out. And um, oh, this, a no, so at night time, at night time you have to have a torch. Come with me next time if you want. <laughs> um, you have to have a torch because you and you laying in the you lay in the tent. And when I was laying in the tent last week, I could hear the lions attacking the cows. And the elephants getting really grumpy and going ah! in the background, and you can hear all this. And then, if you're occasionally once or twice, I've I've come out of my tent because and you can see footprints of, of lions on the sand out to where they've come past into through the camp overnight because there's no fence or anything. So this is kind of fun. As long as you've got a torch, you're all right. You're going to be fine. As long as you, yeah, I have three torches. Uh, this is <laughs> this is the shower. This is the bathroom. Uh, this is quite nice. You've got some bats that hang on the ceiling in here. Some of you might, might be offended by this, but you might like it. I don't know. So they are beautiful. They're very, very small. And um, just kind of hang. There's about six of them. There's a family of six. And they kind of just hang there during the day and they go hunting at night. The bad thing about this is if you actually nip around to the bathroom, the toilet, they sleep underneath here. So I'm just going to give it a little tap. Watch. And they go flying out as we go, oh, there's some more. Oh dear. And then if you go up here, you can, when you sit in the loo, you can watch them hanging on the ceiling. Um, yeah, so that was uh, kind of the first. The last bit I'm going to leave you with is, is my, uh, stills, my stills photography. My photography, and I really admire Paul's work. And I, um, in the, my, my stills photography, 
I get one, one shot and one time to get it, and I can't redo it, and I can't retake it and reset it. So for me, you need to learn your tools. You need to know about animals and, and what they do and how they operate. And it, you, know, you never get the moment again. So here are a few images. I was going to play some music, but we'll do it. So this is... Um, yeah, one of the images, this is uh, where you see the elephants come through um, in the bushland. So you can see some elephants. You can't see them in this picture, otherwise we'd be too close to them. So These are the, some of the local people who are brilliant. And um, the elders are very respected in, in Botswana, northern Botswana, and they're brilliant. Uh, this, is, um, this is a grandson and a granddad. Uh, and in a lot of cases, a, a lot of the fathers have died with uh, AIDS, so the grandfathers uh, bring up a lot of the children, so, which basically transfers some of the culture as well. But it's quite sad because you know, you've got a big generation right in the middle that are missing from the community. They're just checking out his wife, actually, who's doing all the work in the field. And, and I kid you not, she's going for it. So... Um, this is uh, one of the farmers. I particularly like this. If you look carefully, he's got a front-off stereo in the vehicle and a big speaker that they've wired up below, which is brilliant. I love. This we had. Um, this was featured as an editor's uh, choice in African Geographic magazine in January, which is really nice for the 2015 Photographer of the Year competition, which is great. It's one of the farmers. He chose. This is his, be his best. Some of his best clothes, and I put him on. You know, his trailer, because uh, the greens for me matched and worked really well. So he didn't tie his shoelace. That's the only thing I forgot. Yeah. I like this one. I like the composition. For me, it works really well, just um, looking in different directions. And they were having great fun. I was, I was really enjoying playing with them. It's really funny. These are the kind of views. There's been a little bit of increase of saturation, but generally you have this beautiful orange and, and still waters. Uh, this is um, a camp manager. So he was in charge, a guy called John. He was also a healer, and um, he was really respected in, in 13 villages, so we were quite safe with him around. Um, fortunately, he didn't have any bullets for his gun, but the lions didn't know. So it, that's all right. You just give, him a, give it a whack if they get close. That's it. So that's good. The, I'm gonna, there's about five more images left. Here's a couple of hippo. They come out at night and are graze on the grass. Just My tent's just to the left-hand side here. Yeah, but it is a, a beautiful place. Oops, let's get a stick out of it. Where's my images gone? Um, <laughs> Okay, right, I've got a couple left. Hey, look, that's clever. Doesn't want to work. Okay, I'm going to just scale it down a little bit. Um, yeah, another one, again, just the kind of reflections. You can't really see them. There are, there are thousands of dragonflies flying around here, which is pretty amazing to see. Um, um, elephants crossing. A lot of people don't have vehicles. Most of them will walk. Um, but you have to obviously keep your eyes open. This, um, this was a, a great image I enjoyed. It was starting to rain, so the blue is the rains that came across. Uh, and this is a really unusual sight, actually, to see so many zebra and actually giraffe. There aren't many around, actually, anymore. So, um, and this prints, the prints look amazing when you see these printed out. So. And the last about three images or so, three or four images to go. Um, and this is the results of some, you know, some of the, um, the images of the pathways that you saw me on earlier on. And uh, you can see, again, these make for amazing images if you uh, print them out. So, um, and I, I like this one particularly because I like this trunk up in the air. And also I like the donkey who's just admiring what's going on. For me, it was really fun. This was last. This was on sun, last Sunday, actually, 
or Friday. Yes, it's 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning. It's five degrees. It's freezing cold. And this is an impala. And the impala's just checking out. The lions hunt in the morning, so you, the impala's just checking out what's going on. This is a young, young guy. He's not very old. Um, the ears are forwards, heads towards us, which means he's giving us a fake charge. If the ears go backwards, then you need to run or hide because it's a real charge and you're likely to get run over. So, um, but this is just a mock charge from this guy. But um, yeah, and I like the, this warning sign here for me. They'd sma <laughs> they smashed over. This is a tiger snake. They're beautiful. Then they're not very big. Um, and you can pick these up, but um, yeah, if you want to get in. Um, you, but they're not venomous, so, so that's okay. But they're really pretty snakes. This is a kudu. Now, what's, what's nice about a lot of species and this animal, you know, they go around in pairs often. Um, so if you want to do some photography, watch what the first one does, because the second one will always do the same as the first one. So the first one's already crossed and it was out of focus, but that gave me a chance to find work, work out my settings and doof, the second one goes over in roughly the same place. So again, it's just a thing you kind of learn about um, some of the animals when you're, when you're doing that. And I think I'm just about there. And I, We'll finish with a couple more, which is kind of, kind of fun. This is another impala, just having a quick look around. Early morning, something like a foot, we're on about a five to 600 mil lens. This is a leopard. I've got some great footage of him drinking. You don't see them very often. They're normally hiding in trees. And this one, I was out with a, a safari guy, just the two of us, and came down, had a drink, which is nice. And walked right past us, actually. Uh, uh, these guys are some of my favourites. Um, they're, just, they're, just, they're just great. They're just very funny. And yeah, warthogs, very sweet. Quite, quite aggressive little creatures, but very funny. Um, vultures, not very many, many vultures left anymore. Most of them um, get, a lot of them get killed, get poisoned, um, which is unfortunate. But uh, this is kind of what her name is. It's got a snake neck and it kind of bends around like a snake and they, they it's a darter, that's the, what it is. Zebra from the, from the helicopter. This is um, Impala jumping, kind of fun. Again, it's one of those moments you just, you just keep going, okay, let's go, there's, there's a hundred of them. And, uh, and this little guy here, I, this is my last image for today. This is an old elephant. It's a friendly elephant, one of the only friendly ones further down uh, in Botswana, uh, near a safari park, and, and uh, he was just resting his trunk on his ivory. And uh, that finishes my collection for you. Thank you. Thank you.